Hi everyone, Shane from the Reptile Doctor, and this is Jack. And Jack is actually a female bearded dragon, and Jack's about to go to surgery. And you can see there, Jack's right eye doesn't look 100% normal, there's some white scarring tissue going on. And the whole eye itself doesn't actually look too healthy, but that's actually not Jack's problem. We turn Jack around, you can see the other eye here. It's got this pink fleshy growth in it uh, and I actually think what's happened is that Jack's eye wall has ruptured and that is just what we call granulation tissue and so Jack's had chronic problems she's uh, she was born with bad eyes and in fact her clutch mate also has bad eyes I suspect there's probably been a problem during the incubation process and it's resulted in an abnormal eye formation I actually see that relatively commonly in in young bearded dragon so so my advice for Jack's owner was that we actually remove this eye because it's going to end up just chronically infected. It's fairly sore, you touch, touch around the eye and she doesn't like it too much. So we're going to take that eye out today and um, that should make her a lot more comfortable. So we've got Jack anaesthetised now and hooked up to our ventilator so you'll hear that soft sort of clicking noise, that one in the background, that's the ventilator breathing for it. And we've also got a what's called a pulse doppler on her heart. And in the background, you've got that sort of swooshing noise. That's actually her heartbeat. So, so if we have a look at her eye, pretty much it's a bit of a mess. So there's all this sort of pink tissue here. And that's the granulation tissue. So her eyeball has actually ruptured and started to heal. And it's healing with this sort of granulation tissue. And it's a bit of a mess, really. So, so the first stage of the eye removal, there's a couple of different techniques for taking out an eye. Well, the technique I use is I'm actually going to stitch those eyelids shut first. And we'll make an incision around the outside, go down behind the eye and take the eye out. And I'm hoping that we will be able to preserve the third eye of you. And we may be able to make a bit of a flap to cover the hole a bit and make it look a bit more cosmetically nicer. So we'll go ahead and stitch these eyelids shut and then we'll come back and start the incision. All right, so we've stitched these eyelids shut now. But obviously that just hides the problem underneath so we're going to need to take this eye out. So what my plan is, is to make an incision around where I've stitched it. And work my way around behind the eye and remove it that way. So I've started to make our incision around the eye. They have a pretty good blood supply, so they tend to bleed a little bit. But you can see here, that's the skin. And then this pale of white tissue here is what's called the conjunctiva. And that's where we're going to go down beside that and try and remove the eye completely surrounded by that tissue. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So we'll see how we go. We're part way through here and this is the original eyelids that I stitched shut. The eyeball itself was actually quite friable, just fell apart as I touched it. So the actual eyeball has fully ruptured. So that's, that's part of the eyeball there. And what we're doing at the moment is just working our way down behind that. You can see there's a bit of blood. Uh, these guys tend to bleed. It's got quite a good blood supply around there. So we have to try and minimize that mop it up and the clamp here is clamped onto a blood vessel at the back of the eye to try and prevent or minimise that bleeding. So we'll continue on and get this eyeball out and then we'll try and get some degree of closure over it. Alright, so we've got the eye out and you can see it's a pretty gruesome sort of looking hole. Uh, the eye itself came out sort of relatively in bits and pieces so we've got bits of the actual back of the eyeball. You can see that it's pigmented black. Uh, here's the actual front section and you can see that ruptured through the actual through the front of the eye there so what we've been able to do in removing the eye is actually keep what's called the third eyelid intact and that's this little piece of pink tissue just here so what we're going to do is stitch this across that eye there to create a uh, a sort of, I guess, a, a framework that some scarring can occur on and it just sort of minimises post-operative bleeding, chances of post-op infection and just looks a lot better than having a big hole in the surface of the eye and across the head there. So, so we're going to stitch that up and then we'll be finished. So we're about halfway through putting this third eyelid in place. And you can see we've now got that tissue across the hole 
I've got three stitches in there at the moment holding it all in place. We're using a suture material called PDS and I'm not sure how well it'll show up in the video but you can see it's very very fine, it's about as fine as human hair. It's also very expensive so I don't tend to waste it. But it's dissolvable, we don't want to take these stitches out, it'll dissolve out over time. And so we're going to work our way around the eye here and stitch that third eyelid all the way around. And then, as I said before, we'll form a framework for the scarring to occur. And ultimately, these cosmetically heal up really well. And the lizards that uh, have had this surgery go on and live a normal, healthy life. So we've finished stitching that around the eye. So this third eyelid is now positioned all the way around and as you can see it forms a nice cover over that hole. It certainly looks a lot better than just leaving it as a big open, open gaping hole. And so what will happen is this will sort of scar over and scar up, we'll get some skin grow over that and in the next couple of months that will be completely fully healed. So all in all that surgery has gone well, we've taken out that diseased eye and she should make a full recovery. So we'll wake her up now, we'll give her some fluids under the skin and obviously some pain relief and she'll go home on some pain relief and we'll check her again probably in about two weeks to make sure she's going okay but I wouldn't expect any major complications from that surgery.